the state of the UFC is fucking strong, you goofs. In 2013, we had at least seven fights that were the best fight of all fucking time. Suck it, bitchator. There were 457 Fox Sports 1 fight cards, all of which outperformed the NFL and NCIS Indianapolis in the 16 and a half to 43 demographics. Roger Goodell can also suck it. We added 19 women's divisions, changed the heavyweight division into a women's division that's all males, and co-founded a project to create hybrid tiger humans who will also get their own division. Because human tiger monsters are what the fans want to see. Ray Longo and Matt Serra will now corner every single fighter on every single card, including fight cards where human tiger monsters who are unable to understand our language will be competing. All cards that take place in Canada will now feature Johnny Hendricks parading around the arena in a golf cart, holding the welterweight title and waving the American flag. Vitor Belfort will now conduct all post-fight interviews and choose the questions himself. And if the fighter he's interviewing ducks him, he will be met with a spinning head kick of death. We will now be offering counter-programming for every single Bellator event. On nights they have free cards, we will air reruns of the Golden Girls. On nights they have pay-per-views, I'm sorry, I can't say that with a straight face. Get the fuck out of here, Bella shit. Fight pass. <laughs> What's up, fight fans? Welcome to Triple THS, brought to you by Countermove.com. I'm the unripened banana of MMA, Tommy Toehold. Today, Gonzaga gets some help with his cardio, Bendo Bendos, Roy runs for office, Chael gets assaulted, and Frank Murr prepares for the ream. And stick around, because I'm going to tell you how you can turn $10 into $3,000 watching UFC 169 with Countermove.com. And if you don't stick around, I'll know. Vitor is watching. Let's do this shit! <laughs> My kind of town. UFC headed to the tropical oasis of the Midwest known as Chicago Saturday for the 10th installment of Bendo wins a fight people are fucking pissed about. This time with 100% less proposals. Notable happenings. Bruce Leroy found the glow in the third to derail the Sergio Pettis train with an RNC. Caceres received two of the night bonuses, a replica of a replica of a Harley Davidson scooter and the title of Shogun of Harlem. Donald Cerrone was in rare form, stopping the flow of consciousness to lightweight goat Adriano Martin's brain via a shin planted firmly to the neck. Afterwards, Cerrone called Cole Miller a turd the UFC hadn't flushed yet. Yet. Then he fired pistols into the air, spit tobacco into a tin cup, and rode his horse into the sunset. However, due to the extreme cold in Chicago that night, the horse later died of hypothermia. Horse Gracie you will be missed. Then Stone Cold Stipe Maiochis fought a grizzly bear from Brazil. But about 13 seconds into the first round, Gonzaga was sucking air like Kirby's dreamland, and Stipe peppered the Brazilian to a dominant decision win. Afterwards, Stipe Weisers were shared by all. <sighs> 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 You seem a little gassed. Are you okay, Gabriel? Did you have an adrenaline dump, or maybe you had a bug? Perhaps I can be of assistance. Oh no, Showbane, what the fuck is going on? Our plan is proceeding as expected. Behold, Bane Bear. Showbane, why are you here? I'm here to end the borrowed time you've all been living on. What does that mean? It means I can finally fulfill Ra's al Ghul's destiny. Ra's al Ghul is a fictional character. You're a fighter in the UFC, Showbane. Yes, the UFC's money and infrastructure have been important now. And it's not anymore? Not with Bane Bear. I don't even, I honestly don't understand any of this. Ah, I was wondering what would break first. Your spirit or your body. That doesn't even make sense in the context of our conversation. We're done, show Bane. Come, Bane Bear. The fire rises. The main event saw Benson Henderson do what Benson Henderson does. Grind like a stripper on a weekday lunch shift. If you fought Bendo in the UFC and your name isn't Anthony Pettis, chances are you lost a controversial decision to Bendo. As was the case with Josh Thompson, who saw his hopes and dreams of losing to Anthony Pettis shattered when the close bout was given to Henderson via split decision, causing the internet to collectively lose its shit. Fight metric ruled the fight a draw based on the cold, dead efficiency of science and math, but fuck that stuff, let's have three people with subjective experiences, potentially zero knowledge of the sport, and vague ideas of what it means to win a round, decide who wins on the fly moments after an event. One person who didn't much care for the main event was Nathaniel Diaz of Stockton, California, who let his feelings be known via a hilarious Twitter rant, calling out both main eventers for not throwing shit down to its maximum effect. If you'd like to hear the entire rant as performed by someone who sounds nothing like Nate Diaz, click on my balls. Nate caught up with Henderson after the fight to help rid him of his decision grinding ways. Nate, look man, this is stupid. I don't care if I'm excited. I fight how I fight, okay? And why are you wearing a hazmat suit? I don't want to catch whatever shit you got to make you fucking suck. Now listen up. Let's say the other fighter's not engaging you. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna wait for him to make a move so I can counter. That's fucking stupid. You flip him off and call him a motherfucking punk-ass bitch. Motherfucker, what? 
Look, man, that's just not my style. Stop saying words, I'm teaching this shit. Now, the next thing you gotta do is stop wrestling. That shit's boring as fuck, homie. Nobody came here to watch you do that shit. You ever heard somebody say, man, remember that wrestling Henderson did? That shit was fucking used to its maximum effect. That's what's up. No, nobody said that shit, you boring ass motherfucker. Nate, say something again, and I'm gonna tag you with one of these hazmat gloves. Now, when you win, unless these bitch ass judges rob you because they're a bunch of marks, what's the first thing you're gonna do? Thank God. Nope, you got called out the champ, and anybody else who's ranked above you. Then get your homies in on the shout outs. Try some shout outs. I just want to thank my Lord and Savior first and foremost, my loving wife, and all my coaches. What the fuck is that? You didn't thank burritos, entire cities of people, water, time for making days go, my boy Gil Melendez. Why would I thank Gil Melendez? Motherfuck, everybody needs to thank Gil Melendez. Hell is officially frozen over, fight fans, and moved to Chicago. Seriously, your city is like the day after tomorrow. I would not be surprised if there were packs of wolves roving the streets and yetis. And that Arctic vortex may have been caused by Justin Bieber in Canada, or possibly the knowledge that big country Roy Nelson is interested in taking over Keith Kaiser's spot at the head of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Kaiser stepped down a few weeks back, and the NSAC has been searching for a new commissioner ever since. Nelson, known for his hit TV series Duck Dynasty, and setting the record for most punches absorbed by a head, threw his hat into the ring this week, and says if he's commissioner, at least 20 of the UFC's 50 fights this year would be in Nevada. Big Country also has the unwavering support of UFC President Dana White who said, quote, what a fucking moron. Let me tell you what, if he puts an application at fucking Kinko's, he isn't getting that job. Tommy, I just checked FedEx Kinko's isn't hiring, so that's not on me. Roy, you're an active fighter. Isn't that a conflict of interest? You're a conflict of interest. Well put. What would you like to do as commissioner? Drug tests for all the cut men. The cut men? Nobody's ever tested Stitch for steroids. I'm trying to clean up a sport. Interesting. Also, everybody has to walk out to Born in the USA. What about Brazilian fighters, born in the USA. Russian fighters, born in the USA. Canadians, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Actually makes sense. Anything else? Between round snacks? I'm allowed to have water, why can't I have a pizza or a whole loaf of bread? You've got a point, best of luck, Roy. Shit just got real, fight fans. During filming of the third season of Tough Brazil, a fight broke out between coaches Chael Sonnen and Vanderlei Silva. And unlike past seasons where disputes were settled by destroying poorly constructed doors, it sounds like this brawl actually involved brawling. Not only that, but apparently the American gangster was sucker punched mid-fight. It's unclear how the whole shit storm started, or if cameras were there to capture Capture the magic. But I do know one thing, BJ Penn, Frankie Edgar, you better step your fucking game up. Are you alright, Chael? Terry, I've never been better. You're gonna need a lot more than a sucker punch to take down the American gangster. What the hell happened? What happened is Vandy's a season short of a DVD box set. I'm not sure he's even saying words anymore. I taught myself Portuguese on the flight over here. Apparently I should have taught myself batshit insane too. Lucky for me, Vandy throws looping hooks slower than my dead great grandmother. I heard you got sucker punched though. Getting sucker punched would imply that I'm a sucker and Chael Sonnen is only two things. A champion and Chael Sonnen. If you think for even a second that you can stop the American gangster that was three seconds too long. Vandy, you cannot beat me with the team. You could not beat me with the ream. You cannot beat me. No, you can't. You will not beat me. No, you shan't. The shuffleboard courts are calling your name, Vandy. Just give me an opening in April and I will gladly escort you there. Tammy, I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got teams to coach, dreams to make come true, and grumpy old men to annoy. So I will leave you with the best bit of advice I have ever received. Kaboom. Fight fans, UFC 169 is about to go off like a Richard Sherman post-game speech. Two title fights, two really scary Brazilian guys, and a good old-fashioned pink slip on a pole match. Frank Mir and Alistair Overeem, two giant men with giant names in MMA, and neither of these motherfuckers have won a fight since 2011. It's do or die for both, and if my love life has taught me anything, it's that desperate people make terrible decisions. And this fight should be no different. You've got Frank Mir, submission master who likes to stand and trade with world-class strikers, Alistair Overeem, a world-class striker who gives zero fucks about defending himself, and in Mir's goddamn Harry Potter ground game. You've got a fight of the night, fight of the year, and fight of the fucking decade. I'm ready, Tommy. Let's do this. Jesus Christ, Frank. What are you wearing? This is my Ream Buster suit. Are they gonna allow you to wear that during the fights? Oh, yeah. It's part of my TUE. Oh. Yep, I get the testosterone replacement I need. This cool suit. I'm allowed to carry either a mace or a katana during the second round. My opponent's water bottle is filled with warm eggnog. I'm allowed two kicks to the nuts. I can tag someone in to help. I have four timeout calls. And my opponent has to fight with his eyes closed. Well, it's all within the rules of the exemption, so I'm perfectly okay with everything you just said. Fight fans! You're gonna watch UFC 169. I know it, you know it, your girlfriend knows it. So why not make this Super Bowl weekend a little more exciting? Play fantasy MMA at countermove.com. It's just like fantasy football, except you're not playing through an entire season. It's one night, one card, you pick a team of five fighters, your guys perform, you rack up points, you win. It's that fucking easy. And Crooklyn's got a $15,000 tournament for UFC 169, which means your $10 entry could land you $3,000. That is stupid money. And with three Gs, you might be able to justify the 85 inch television you just bought for the Super Bowl. And if you use the promo code 
TTHS10 when making any and all cash deposits for UFC 169, you get a bonus of $10 added to your deposit. And that $10 bonus can go towards your entry into Crooklyn's tourney. So get off your lazy ass, go to countermove.com, sign up today, invite a friend, and get in on Crooklyn's tourney before I buy up the remaining spots to feel better about myself. That's Joe Fight fans. Tune in next Wednesday when me and Glover to share a debate who is a better Batman, Kilmer or Clooney. For everybody, Triple THS, I'm Tommy Toehold. What's so goddamn funny?